were married for maybe a year. Let's start to try and see what happens. A year went by, probably 15 years. We didn't know we were even going to that night. A friend of ours had invited us to go. We're at the table, I said, what is this fundraiser about? Randy had made a statement. He said, every, every one of you that are believers, you need to understand that God adopted you. Probably one of the greatest uh, experiences was his birth mother handing him to me. If you're enjoying Table Talk, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember to click that notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest posts. Well, adoption began on the cross where Jesus opened the door for us to become sons and daughters of God. But our guests today revealed that this story didn't end there. They join us to share how we can all play a part in continuing this incredible story of God's love through adoption. But before we get to that, joining me around the table is Kendra Kelly-Dean. Hey. Because we've all been grafted in, right? Isn't it a blessing? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful to know that we were wanted mm -hmm. and that he yes. would do what he did? He sacrificed what he did yeah. so that we could be a part of his family and call him our right. Heavenly Father. Right. That's and, a good God. And give us eternal <laughs> life. For, yeah, to be with him forever. Yeah. And all of our family will be there too. That's you know, right. those who've gone on before us and all yeah. of that. It's just beautiful. It's a beautiful picture of what he has created for us and how the family should function. I love that. Dorothy yes. Newton, how are you? You know, I'm feeling grateful. Really yeah. am. You know, I was with my oldest and his family this past weekend. And just to see how God has truly transformed his life or just have encouraged him to be the best parent, the best mm -hmm. wife, best husband. And you're a part and, of that. Yes. And, and much as of a that single is parent, a single mom. As, yeah. Yes, and I'm, I'm just so grateful. Yeah. I mean, God is truly amazing. He will be whatever he needs to be in our lives. Yes, he will. As so long good. as we I surrender to him. So, Rachel Lamb Brown, I know you're all about adoption family. and babies and family. Yes. yes, I have two little boys of my own. And so yeah. I can't think of a greater honor than it is to be a parent and to be yeah. a mom and to be trusted with a little life. And yeah. our God is a God of generations. And yeah. so I'm excited to hear the story today of our guest and, yeah. and how they're able to continue their family legacy. And, you know, being a parent, can you understand a little bit more about how the father feels about us? Uh, I don't think you can <laughs> truly comprehend it until... <laughs> You are a parent yourself and you yeah. experience this love that's so indescribable. Yeah, it's like yes. you would do anything for your kids and it's mm -hmm. a perfect picture yeah. and representation of how the father feels about you because he would do anything for his Yeah, kids. and after you had kids, you were like, Mom, I love you even more. <laughs> I do, because you realize. You, you do don't realize. Know you, don't. you don't. Until you go through Until it. You, know. you don't know what you oh, don't yeah. know. I was like, I'm sorry calls. for all the times that I... <laughs> You have, been, you have been an amazing daughter. I'm so proud of you. Cindy Murdoch, we've been hey. down that road, had babies. We and, have. And, yeah. you know, I was thinking while you were talking that an adopted child that is adopted into a family that loves them profusely, I want to say, mm -hmm. has to somehow be able to understand and grasp the father's love in a way that maybe those that hadn't been adopted as a child, mm -hmm. but how they must know what it's yeah, like. Yes, because kind of like they were chosen. Yeah. Yeah. They so were we'll, special we'll talk chosen. about that. We're yeah. so glad to have Sean and Holly Baker at the table. Welcome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All the way from Florida, you came to Texas yeah. <laughs> to discover the heat in a way that you And no know. palm trees. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few palm oh, trees. that's right. <laughs> that's right. right. Yeah, so glad y'all were here. Well, in a world where the family is under assault, divorce is on the rise, and thousands of children are waiting for their forever home. How do we respond to that? Well, Sean and Holly Baker are here to share their personal journey of faith, family, and God's redemptive plan through adoption. Now, Sean, um, before we get into that story, tell us a little bit about your personal story because you know there are, there are, there are people watching right now that maybe you come from a single parent home or um, maybe you were disappointed uh, in in a mom and dad that got a divorce or maybe a mom and dad that weren't there. And so I think it's always good to tell a story because if we look at you, I don't see any residue of some of the stuff you went on, uh, went through early on, but there is a story there. But that's the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He removes it from us, right? Yeah. And so uh, as a young child, we had a great family. Through my lens, we had a great family. Uh, two older siblings and... Um, 
At the age of 12, though, my father had left uh, the home. My brother and sister were older. They were already out of the house. And that just left my mom and I. Mom went through a, a dark season. Um, she battled with thoughts of suicide, even attempted at one time. And it was just a, it, it was a, it was a difficult season. And as a 12-year-old boy, you know, your, your world is shattered. As a 13-year-old boy, your world is just turned upside down. Emotionally, you're changing, you're growing, you know. And um, I was just in a dark, deep hole. And my family never went to church. We didn't, we didn't, I didn't know what church was, didn't know what it was even about. And I can remember we were driving down Princeton Road in Hamilton, Ohio, Mom and I were. And we saw this beautiful building. And I asked my mother, I said, what is that building? And she said, that's a church. And I said, well, what is a church? And she said, that's where they worship God. And I said, well, who is God? Wow. <laughs> and she tried to do her very best to explain to me who God was. And it was just she and I in the home at that point. And so um, I said, I want to go to that place. Take me there. Honey, we don't have clothes that we could go to that church. I was so persistent. I want to take me to that. I want to go. So she did. And the first service that I ever went to, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. Wow. Dr. Sam Luke, who you know. <laughs> Sam uh, Luke came to our church as a revivalist when yeah. I was a young girl. That's wow. so crazy. And I was very impacted by his yeah. ministry. He's still, He's we still gotta preaching. have him on some time with you. Would that not yes. be great? It'd be awesome. Okay, so he was preaching at Princeton Pike, he was right? preaching at Princeton Pike, and I couldn't even tell you what he even preached about. <laughs> He was but a great, he's a great preacher. He's though. a great preacher. Yeah. He's still a mentor, spiritual father in my life, yeah. a voice in my life. And, uh, but what changed me in that moment was the love that was in that place. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere was just, per, the, the love permeated it. Mm -hmm. And it was the love of the father. Wow. Yeah. And when he gave the altar call, I got up in front of 2,400 people as a 13 year old boy and went to the altar and I was adopted. Wow. into God's royal family. Yes. Amen. And God has been my father since that day wow. and forever will be. So tell yes. us about what happened to your mom as a result of you making that decision. So shortly thereafter, mom ended up coming into the kingdom. Mom gave her heart to Christ. And I wish everything was great from that point on, but it wasn't. Mom married somebody that was attending that church that had personal struggles. And he was an addict. And we had thought, she had thought that he'd gotten victory over it, uh, but he didn't entirely. Um, but he ended his race well. He ended up repenting, giving his heart back to Christ before he passed. And so I know that he's a part of my future and it's going to be glorious on the other side. Um, but it wasn't good. He was very abusive to mom. Mm. And that was a lot for, for me as a young boy to to endure. And it was a lot for mom to endure because... I went to church, found love, found peace. Mm. Mom comes into the kingdom and then this, wow. yeah. you know, and, but, you know, Pastor Luke and Pastor Jake Jacobs, who, you know, uh, both those guys um, were just tremendous voices. And mentors in your and life. And mentors in my yeah. life. And there were some days that it was so dark that Jake would just take me to the altar and we'd just cry together. Mm. And all of that pain God just minded out by the power of his spirit and through his love. It just and what happened it. to mom eventually and what happened to you as far as your call in ministry? Yeah, so um, mom, uh, they ended up divorcing and um, mom ran single for a little bit and then married a man who I wish would have been my father growing up. Wow. Paul is a tremendous man of God, yeah. and I can't wait for you all to meet him one day. He is just a gentle giant, and, and we love him. she's in your him. church. And she's in my church. They both relocated to <laughs> awesome. Santa Rosa Beach, Florida, and they They're both gonna serve. They're going to suffer for Jesus right there in Santa Rosa, Florida. <laughs> yeah. And, the uh, Emerald Coast. The Emerald yes. Coast. And they're both serving, doing well, and they've been married now. 23 years, oh, I that's think. Wonderful. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Awesome. And so Holly and I just celebrated our 25th wow. wedding anniversary. Oh, that's awesome. But you know, so, um, even though your mom went through all of that, like Dorothy was talking about earlier, because she had a relationship with God, mm -hmm. she still made it through those difficult circumstances yeah. and, and came out on the other side. God sent a wonderful man into her life. And uh, you were called in the ministry. Did you ever think you'd be a preacher? No. I did not. We were in a Sunday night service, and um, 
there was because I know of, you had a business side as yeah, well. That, yeah, and, very I, and, entrepreneurial. I, and I went on to school and got a yeah. business degree and, yeah. and a business administration degree. But I was in a Sunday night service at the age of 14, just a year later. There was a sweet mother of the house that gave me a prophetic word. And uh, that word was confirmed. And I, I knew what my future would, would hold, especially with the two voices that yeah. were speaking into me, yeah. Dr. Luke and Pastor Jake. Yeah. And uh, I, I knew the trajectory that God had me on at, at a young age. Yeah. And so those guys have stayed with me and uh, they're still you know, fathers in, in my walk. Right, there's so, so much more to your story. We don't have to t- tell all of it, but you're pastoring a great church in there, Santa Rosa. But tell us how about this beautiful young lady came into your life. So I was 16 years old. I just transferred into Fairfield High School and um, I was praying, uh, Lord, I don't want to go through this whole dating thing forever, you know. Just show me who my wife is, and let's let's just get let's just get on with life, you know. <laughs> yeah. I had a lot that matured me young, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we were in the lunchroom, and I looked over, and I see this beautiful girl eating a candy bar, and I felt like <laughs> the Lord was saying, "You're going to marry her." So I asked the guys at the table, I said, who's that gal? And they said, oh, you don't want to know her. And they were saying that for the wrong reasons. And the more they talked, the more I was like, I want to know her. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> Sign me up. And, uh, and we started dating in high school. So we're high school sweethearts. Oh, so we've been married 25 years, but we've been together 30. Wow. Oh, 30 wow. Years. That's amazing. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the journey into ministry and then having a family, because that was both a, des- a desire that you both had, right, Holly? Sure, yes. So um, we were high school sweethearts, and then we went off to uh, college together. Actually, the first date that we went together, I grew up Lutheran, so I was a good Lutheran girl, said the Lord's Prayer every night, and (laughs) when I went uh, through confirmation classes in sixth grade, I really could feel the presence of the Lord, so he was even wooing me at Mm. that point in my life, so I always felt a nearness to God Mm -hmm. and felt like I could pray and cry out to him. But after Sean and I met in high school, the very first place that we went on our first date, my first date, my first car date (laughs) was to a church service. He wanted to introduce me to his spiritual father and it was in that service that I gave my heart to the Lord and committed my life uh, to Christ. So that was that with Sam? No, that was actually Pastor Jake was preaching at Youth Revival. That was was Sam's associate at that time, yeah. Okay, so talk about wanting to have kids. So um, we in our we were married for maybe a year and we thought, well, let's start to try and see what happens. Um, a year went by, two years, five years. And, um, you know, times of disappointment and uh, discouragement and sadness. And finally 10 years? And it, probably 15, it was probably 15 years. So can a you total 15 that, years. Rachel? 15 years of believing God, and then something happened kind of supernatural. What was that? Yeah, so what happened was is we were invited to go to a fundraiser, and at this fundraiser, it was um, the speaker was leaving, leading an advocacy group for adoption, and uh, his name's Randy Bolender, and um, I didn't even know what we, we didn't know what we were even going to that night. A friend of ours um, and invited us to go. Ron and Mary invited us to go to this, and we get there, and we're at the table, and I said, what is this fundraiser about? He said, oh, I've, it's about adoption. You don't have to give any money to it. I've got it covered. But that moment changed our life. Mm. Uh, Randy had made a statement. He said, every, every one of you that are believers, you need to understand that God adopted you. And when he said that, my spirit opened up. The Lord started dealing with me. And uh, not just me, but also but also Holly as well. And I think it was at that moment, that was the first time we'd ever really even thought about it or even considered it. And then the Lord fast-tracked us from there. And that's what led us to Jonah, was through that conversation on the way home. And um, I thought, what kid wouldn't want to be a part? So this wasn't like an overnight process, Holly, was it? It was very difficult, time-consuming, and costly. Absolutely costly. And we're going to talk about that and how Zoe's house came about as a result of you kind of navigating through all that. But tell us about the journey to Jonah. What happened? The journey to Jonah was a wonderful journey, but hard and long. Um, You know, lots of paperwork Mm. that you fill out, and you just think, you know... If, the, if you're a biological mama, there's so many things that 
you don't have to do. Right. So it seems like there was always extra processes and extra funds that we were having to walk through. Once we decided to pursue adoption, um, we had to become home study ready. And um, we were home study ready in May of 2013. And then we were matched with a birth mother on 9-11-2013. And then Did Jonah, she pick y'all out of the group? She did, okay, okay. yes. And what did you know about Jonah before he arrived? What did you know about his birth mother or father? We knew, we his ad adoption is actually a closed adoption. So we know details of it, but uh, it's closed to the public. But we were able to meet her and she wanted to meet us. Um, before, so we kind of got oh. to choose her and she was able to choose us as well. So we were able to meet with her, talk with her. She was able to ask us questions. We were able to ask her questions. And then she chose us and Jonah was born on November 11th, and 2013. How much did he weigh and how beautiful? Seven pounds, six ounces, <laughs> and just a beautiful bundle of joy. And probably one of the greatest uh, experiences of that, um, of his birth, was his birth mother handing him to me. Oh, oh, wow. wow, I love that. We've got, I know, pictures of Jonah now. I don't know if we have baby pictures, but he's such a doll. Oh, I know. And of course, he he participates in the church service. What does he do, so, Pastor Sean? Yeah, so his, his role is, is he dismisses kids' church. And you never know what he's going to say. So what are some of the things he said? To the con well, I was there this the Sunday that he said yeah. what you told the girls Yeah, earlier. I'll, I'll share that. A few weeks ago, he uh, he gets up and he says, uh, good morning, church family. Everybody, you know, repeats back good morning to him. And he says, boy, don't we have some beautiful women in this church? <laughs> oh <my laughs> and Holly and I are grabbing each other like, oh, my. And he says, and some handsome men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You never know what's going to come out of his mouth. And then, but there, it's always good. But there was, so it is, he's yeah. so spontaneous. Y'all yes, yeah. don't know what he's going to say. Don't know what he's going to say. Yesterday, we were in church with y'all, and he said, um, he said, okay, everybody, I know you want to hear my dad preach, so we'll get on with this, kids. Let's go back. <laughs> I mean, but one, no, no one, one morning it was about a rainbow. Yes, yes two sure weeks that. ago we were on our way to church, and there we, I could see a rainbow rainbow in my rearview mirror. And I said, Jonah, can you turn around and look, look at the rainbow? And he said, oh, wow. And that was all that was said. When he went up to dismiss, he said, on my way to church this morning with my mom, we saw a rainbow. And a rainbow is a sign of God's promise. And just the beauty oh, of wow. that statement, mm -hmm. it was just, it, yeah. the, the simplicity, it was so anointed and uh, so special. So what does um, Jonah think about being adopted? He loves it. So what does he, <laughs> he say? Does he, you know, I mean, you always hear, well, they want to meet their birth mother or they want this. or And y'all, like you said. Yeah, it's closed. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, no, he, he's never really went there. And so what we've done is we've sent letters and books and pictures back to the lawyers who helped facilitate it Aww. in the event that the birth family would ever want to get an update yeah. or change their mind or whatever, you know? So we're open to whatever yeah. God wants to do in the future, yeah. but we know that God's going to use him to change the world. Mm -hmm. I'll share this with you. When Holly and I had met with his birth mom, this is the power of a praying grandmother, her grandmother had told her, said, if you ever get pregnant, don't ever get an abortion. Mm. Give your child to a minister. Wow. And let him travel the world, make his life count. Wow. And so he's traveled the world. Because you guys pastored in Israel. We pastored in yeah. Israel. And Jonah was right along with you. Right along and with how us. many other states? I mean, he's Oh, he's been all over. I mean, there's too <laughs> many to amazing. name here. He's yeah. been all over. But but God, you know, God, God's hand is on it. And mm -hmm. just the other day, there was a conversation that took place with um, a young adult in our, in our ministry who's having um, struggles because she was adopted. And that, that feeling of not being wanted or, or you know, dealing with self-worth, right? Mm -hmm. and, and the Lord, the Lord put a word in my spirit, and it was this, is that you don't come from your mother. You come through your mother. Mm -hmm. God is ultimately so your father. That. He's your creator. So You're yeah. fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has a tremendous plan for your life. And so you have to, you know, we, we have always instilled that into him mm -hmm. at a young age, right? That, that God sovereignly saved you. 
because you're like an Esther. You're mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna impact your generation. Right? Now, how did you tell him that he was adopted? Was that a hard conversation to have? Because I know a lot of families always weigh: should we say something? Should we not say something? And how to have right that from the beginning? Yes, books. we've always been very honest. I mean, from the time he was uh, a toddler, the books that we read to him, the books were about adoption, and we would talk about that. You didn't come from mommy's belly, but you were you were conceived in mommy's heart. So we always communicated to that from the from the earliest age. And then as he got older, we would just continue to be honest with him. That's good. I think that's so important. Okay, tell us about Zoe's house because I know you, you Pastor Sean, kind of operate with a kingly and a priestly anoint, anointing in that you you very entrepreneurial and have right. businesses and stuff God's blessed you with. So through this process, God began to show you that there was a lot of things not right about the whole adoption process. Talk about that. Yeah, so we went with a Christian agency and uh, they sent us the, the pricing sheets and the way that they would price out the children, you know, 11 years ago uh, was, was filled with injustices. And then the application fees, right? And so on and so forth. And a lot of families just aren't in a place financially where they can put 1500 2500 or $5,000 per fee at different agencies, right? So you can be you know, from five to $15,000 just to get your name in, in the hat that, without any guarantee. That coupled with the way that they would price the children based upon race, authenticity, et cetera, uh, it just infuriated me. And this was a Christian agency. And so uh, we get through the process. We ended up hiring a consultant, which helps families get matched which is another fee, quicker. We hired a consultant and uh, they got us through. We were laying in bed one night and Holly said, do you want to adopt another one? And what was the statement that, that I made? Do you remember? Well, I, I need to, we need to recoup the funds from this first one first. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we need to figure out where all our money went. Yeah. And we, maybe God wants to do something beyond just adopting another child. Maybe we need to try to change this industry. And... Um, so that conversation that night led us to inviting Randy Bolender into Cincinnati where we were pastoring at that time and working. And Randy began to lay out to us a strategy that God had put in his spirit some years before on how to make adoption more affordable. And so one of our ministry partners and friends, I connected Randy with him. We had a meeting and uh, out of that meeting, came Zoe's house, right? It took us two plus years to get it off the ground. Randy was the pioneer. Now his wife serves as the executive director. And we like to describe it like this, that uh, we streamlined the process, cut out all the middle people. It's a nonprofit. So people that don't have a grace on their life to adopt, they can still be a part of the solution. That's great. By making a donation to Zoe's house. And that helps offset the cost for families. So around $15,000 there about plus or minus. It can go a little higher depending on what some of the ancillary costs may be. Compared associated. to what would have been 30, uh, 40, 50 sometimes. Oh no, we, we were at just under a hundred. Wow. Just under a hundred thousand. So, so if people goodness. want to adopt a child, would Zoe's house be able to help facilitate they that? They would be able to help facilitate that. Awesome. Yeah. So I know we've got that information we're going to put on the screen along with a uh, calendar that was done by Zoe's house of all these beautiful babies yeah. <laughs> that have been adopted, kindred to families that may not have been able yeah. to afford it because it was so ridiculous, oh. all the middle people It's involved. a blessing. You know, I, I have a question, and I want to be very sensitive in how I ask this, but if you're walking with a couple and they have tried everything, you know, treatments, all of that, and it's gone on for several years, at what point or how do you go about um, encouraging that couple that maybe, maybe you should ask God if you're open to adoption. And maybe that is the plan and the purpose that you have, that he has for you. I mean, how do you even go about telling a couple that or helping them or, or do you just not? What you do you just say? You, do? you know, I was recently on Joni Taylor. Yeah. Talk, <laughs> right. And we had a couple. No, go ahead and answer that question. <laughs> well, I wish somebody would have told us earlier to be honest with you. Okay. Um, the whole that, 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 that was even an option. Yeah. yeah. The, the Holy Spirit sovereignly led us to this conclusion. Looking back, I wish I would have had a brother or sister to say, have you ever considered this? You know, yeah. 
And, um, and I, uh, what, that's what came into my heart too, what Joni just said. I would send them the link of this show yeah. and, and, and let that be uh, the, the beginning of the conversation yeah. for them, right? So I would encourage everybody, if you got the grace on you to do it and you feel like God's calling you mm -hmm. to adopt, do it. Yeah. I'm telling you, there's something special about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's just wonderful that you guys were able to, you know, take in a little life. What was the, the best part of the process? Because I know we talked about some of the difficult parts, but what was the best part of the process? I think the best part of the process, number one, was just being able to meet with the birth mother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, God's greatest gift to us mm -hmm. was the gift of his son because mm -hmm. he knew what was best for us. Mm -hmm. But she gave us a gift because she knew what was best for him. She knew what was best for Jonah. So wow. So you mentioned that there, Zoe's house is open to people that want to help financially. Absolutely. How would someone go about that? They would just they would just connect with them via their website or the, all their information's on the website. I know Joni will put it on the screen. Okay. And um, they would be able to connect. Kelsey Bolender now is the executive director phenomenal leader, her and her staff would help facilitate that heart. And I want to encourage everybody, all the listeners, to, to go to the website, connect with Zoe's house. You will not regret it. It's a great ministry. They're doing a phenomenal work. So um, we're about out of time, Sean. As a pastor, there's so many other things we could talk about. But, uh, you know, going through this process, could y'all have imagined going through it without having a personal relationship with Jesus and talk to our audience today about why that's so important. Yeah, it is so important because as Paul said, without Christ in this world, I would be a man most miserable. We live in a world that seems like it's in a suicidal race for ruin. But I'm telling you, in the midst of chaos, God has a wonderful plan. It's a wonderful plan for your life. And when I surrendered my ideas and my dreams to his, I realized that his or much larger, bigger, far-reaching than mine. I want to encourage you to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ today. I want to encourage you to make Christ the Lord of your life. I love that. Well, that's all the time we have. I want you to remember that James 1, 27 says, True religion is to take care of widows and orphans. God's heart is for the fatherless, the broken, the lost. And His will is for us to play a part in reaching the least of these with him. And if you're watching today, if you need prayer, or if you invited Jesus into your heart and you just said, Jesus, I don't know about what all they're talking about, I, but I do think I need you. Come into my heart. Forgive me today. I mean, you can just say that right there where you are. And he hears your prayer. And uh, we'd love to pray with you. Our prayer partners are standing by ready to do that. And uh, if you prayed that prayer today, I want to send you the Gospel of John this is a new journey you're starting on and the word of God is important and the book of John is a great place to start. And so that's just our free gift to you. So if you're watching and you prayed that prayer, call the number, let us send that to you. I want to thank Sean and Holly for joining us today. And if their story of adoption resonates with you, if you want more information, you know someone who needs this information, you can visit zoeshouseadoptions.com and to stay connected with Sean and Holly, uh, you can visit pastorshawnbaker.com. If you're in the Destin, Santa, Santa Rosa, Rosa Beach, Beach, Miramar, Beach, Miramar area. Beach area, come visit the church, New, New Life, Life Church. church. Yep. Of course, as always, be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. You can leave us a comment. Let us know how Table Talk is touching your life. We love hearing from you. And you want to make sure you subscribe to the Joni Table Talk podcast. It's available right now across all top podcast apps. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, ladies. This is a good little heartwarming story. Yes. I loved it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching. I pray you've been encouraged. And again, if you're believing God for a baby, we're going to pray with you. We'd love to do that. Or if you would consider adoption, hey, um, that's an option as well, too. So we'll be praying for you about that. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye for today.